And the last thing on our mind should be making a masterpiece. That's a lot of pressure. Don't do that to yourself. After going through everything that we have all been through as a world, we need refuge. We need a place where we can just go and just get into the groove of making something for us artists who choose that path for soothing our troubles. We don't need to be putting pressure on ourselves to make a beautiful painting, to make a perfect painting. And I think also a lot of beginner watercolor artists, they start art for many reasons, but they want to make something beautiful, but that's a lot of pressure. I think the focus should shift to just having fun with it. And one of the things that helps foster creativity is fun and curiosity. Be a little bit more indulgent with yourself and kind to yourself than you think you deserve. Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio where you learn not just the how, but the why of watercolor. So you move along your painting journey a lot faster. And I'm also taking, trying to make a lot more content that is uh, applicable to just, not just watercolor, but art in general because I think art brings a lot of comfort and a lot of meaning to a lot of people. And so I'd like to address some of those things as well. And one of the things that I woke up thinking about this morning, here we are in the beginning of 2024, it feels like a fresh start. I always love that feeling of a fresh new start and what I wanna focus on for the year. And for me, the thing that keeps coming up to my mind is one, simplicity, um, make things more simple and that can apply to your actual process of painting to uh, winnowing out those things in your life that aren't important and that just kind of sap your energy uh, simplifying the items in your household so you don't have a bunch of clutter it can mean lots of different things for me i'm definitely thinking in terms of um, simplifying my paintings so that um through simplifying them, they actually have more strength. And I wanna simplify my paintings and I think that makes for a stronger composition in general. But also the theme of simplification throughout our lives is also a really interesting idea and an interesting thing to just think about. How can we simplify our lives to just be able to focus on the most important things? and not worry about all the excess things that don't really matter. So that's another thing to think about. And for me, that would be the most important things are my family and my art and my well-being. And everything other than that is really not too important. So I want to focus on those things. But another idea popped up in my head this morning. I was thinking about uh, a video recently published by by Oliver Pyle. His newest video that he made, it's only 11 days old and it has gotten 200,000 views. So of course, as a YouTuber, that sparks my interest because that video tells me a lot about what people are interested in. And his title is Best Ever Watercolor Ex Exercise. So what is it about an exercise and what is it about that video that appealed to so many people? And I think what it is, if you watch that video, and I highly encourage you to watch his video, he's got amazing content, he's amazing um, artist, his, his landscapes are so beautiful. And I think what stuck out to me is that the exercise that he did in that video was really low pressure and you could just enjoy your watercolor and see what you could do with them. Play with color, play with line, play with textures and, and you're not trying to make it look like anything. You're just painting for painting's sake. It's an exercise to just get your brushes wet and see what your brushes and your paper and your paint all do together. And I love that. And I think the thing that is so appealing about that, and I would love to hear in the comments, if you've watched that video, what you think of that video and what about that video appeals to you the most. To me, what stood out was that it's no pressure. And I think especially coming out of what happened in 2020 and everything that was so crazy, uh, everybody's lives got up, turned upside down. I know for myself, relationships changed a lot because views changed a lot or became more set in stone. And those things affected people's relationships, friendships and family relationships. Um, friendships ended and new ones began. Uh, family relationships felt different. 
Uh, some became closer, some became more distant. And that is a lot to go through. I think for me, I'm just real steady cut type of gal. I like things to stay the same, the same, especially in my relationships. If I'm your friend, I'm there for the long haul. And to have some relationships change like that is really unsettling to me. And I think also really um, hard things happen and people develop some unhealthy habits, me included. And I'm, we're trying to, it's almost like sh shedding a snake skin to come through that whole process. And of course, I want to come out of that whole um, experience stronger, wiser, and better. And, um, and I got better in 2023. And I want to get even better in 2024 in so many ways. I want to get better in my art. I want to get better in my relationships. I want to get better in my health. And so... I'm kind of getting off the topic, but let me get back to what I think is so appealing about Oliver's video that's appealed to so many people. It's no pressure. And after going through everything that we have all been through as a world, we need refuge. We need a place where we can just go and just get into the groove of making something for us artists who choose that path for soothing our troubles. We don't need to be putting pressure on ourselves to make a beautiful painting, to make a perfect painting, to become good artists. That's a lot of pressure. Uh, I think art, especially for a lot of people that I've heard from, a lot of people, uh, a lot of my online students who I get a lot closer to have been through really hard things and they need their art to be a place where they can just relax, unwind, um, follow their fascination. And I think a lot of times art can really stress us out because we want our art to look a certain way and it doesn't <laughs> and that's frustrating even for me I have been so frustrated ever since I started my journey online in front of a lot of people because you feel the pressure to be better to make amazing art that really appeals to people and that's a lot of pressure and it's hard and I think also a lot of beginner watercolor artists they start art for many reasons but they want to make something beautiful, but that's a lot of pressure. I think the focus should shift to just having fun with it. And the funny thing about that is, and this is according, I do, a, I used to be a school social worker. Uh, I have a master's in social work. So I've, I've read a lot of research on learning and how do we learn best? We learn best when we like our teacher and we learn best when we're having fun and you read about the artistic creative process, there's a lot of fascinating research out there about creativity and what helps uh, foster creativity. And one of the things that helps foster creativity is fun and curiosity. Uh, pressure to get it right and to learn a lot does not foster learning, nor does it foster creativity. Uh, I read a New York Times article, I can't find it for the life of me, it's over a decade old that said, uh, Take vacations, take time off, just have fun, follow your curiosity. You almost have to let go and just enjoy the process of being creative and not putting pressure on the process. So I love that. And I love how people resonated with Oliver's watercolor, um, watercolor experiments on that video. And no matter what kind of art or craft or creative endeavor you do, whether it's computer coding or art or pottery or um, making beautiful cakes, whatever it is that you do to be creative, uh, decorate your home. I think having a, a sense of fun and whimsy and curiosity to be the main driver behind your creative endeavors is really very constructive. So I love that about being an artist. My job is to have fun encourage you all to have fun, uh, be curious, have questions and ask those questions. And the last thing on our mind should be making a masterpiece. That's a lot of pressure. Don't do that to yourself. Even if you're painting for a competition, like right now, I'm painting a piece specifically to try to get it into a competition. And it's a fight to stay in that creative, curious, bold, um, forward moving uh, place, but that's, 
I think the best place mindset to be in. And we, we can't always get in that mindset. And we're going to fall back into our habits of this looks like ish. <laughs> and just that's when you just need to put it away for the day and come back to it fresh when you're feeling good. And I'll just say this, and this is just my experience only. I'm not trying to give anyone health advice or anything, but this is just my personal experience. And that is, I really paint better. I really think way more clearly when I'm making a point and really focusing. It takes a lot of focus for me to be healthy. Uh, I'm very sensitive to sugar and foods that have carbohydrates in them because I'm hypoglycemic. I have fibromyalgia, so my pain gets so much worse when I eat sugar and I eat wrong and I need to move. If I don't move, I get stiff and sore. And uh, if I don't sleep right, I don't think. My art suffers. I can't talk. And so that is another thing that I would just encourage you to think about is uh, for 2024, don't overwhelm yourself with a bunch of goals because that won't work. And I'm coming back to my training as a counselor. Um, but pick, try to pick something that you could work on in 2024. Just one thing, not sleep and exercise and stopping a bad habit, whatever that may be, um, and eating right. Pick one thing that to you is the most important thing to make yourself feel better and focus on that only for 2024. And to help you do that, the best thing to do is to find a replacement for whatever um, that bad habit was feeling. Like if it's not getting enough exercise, you needed to rest on the couch. And when you're tired, you just don't have the energy to go do something. What is something that could replace that, that served that purpose of, um, of, of being tired. Maybe it's getting more sleep. Maybe it's eating better. Uh, I know when I eat better, I have more energy to exercise. So what is the one thing that you could work on to make yourself feel better? And I'm sharing this because if you feel better, you're going to have more energy. You're going to feel better. You're going to think better. You're going to learn better when you're trying to create and have fun. And you're going to to have fun, you got to feel good, right? So it's really important to take care of yourself. So I hope you all are taking care of yourself. Be a little bit more indulgent with yourself and kind to yourself than you think you deserve because we all are hard on ourselves in this Victorian culture uh, that we have here in the United States. I don't know in the rest of the world, but we are really hard on ourselves, I think, especially in the United States to just produce, be better. Uh, have the best art, have the most money. It's a lot of competition and a lot of pressure and uh, let that go. <laughs> it's not healthy. And instead indulge in what do I need to do to take better care of myself? So if you need to go for take two or three hours and go walk around in nature when you really feel like you should be cleaning the house, do that. That's just an example. Just Take care of yourself and be a little indulgent with yourself so then you have the energy to be healthy so then you can be more creative and feel less stress in your body because if you are stressed, that mindset is not going to serve you well creatively. So I hope you all take care of yourself. I'm sorry this got long winded, but I just really feel like this is a good time of the year to think about these things and, and re, re remember where to put our focus and everybody's answer to that is going to be different. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments if this inspires you to make a big change or a little change in your life to make your life more creatively fulfilling in any way that works for you. And that's going to look so different from for everybody. For me, it's going to be eating healthier and being healthier. So I have more energy to be more clear minded to create and to have fun creating, to remember to have fun and keep it simple with my art. That's my goal for my art this year. So I'd love to hear what your goal is. We're going to do some fun things on this channel. So please subscribe if you haven't. We're going to have some fun. We're not going to put pressure on ourselves. We're going to learn the why, not just the how of watercolor. So we move on our journeys a lot faster. But I think even more than that, I want to have fun and I want to inspire other people to have fun. And I think we need fun. I think we need, I need fun. <laughs> I really need fun, y'all. 
So we're going to, we're going to have fun. So I hope that was helpful and I wish you all the best in 2024. I hope you will be blessed and happy and healthy and be creative. And until next time, go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.